Your brokenness is your greatest blessing. Grand rising, beautiful kings and queens, and welcome to a Mother's Touch Radio. I am your host, Coach Susie, the PTSD Confidence Coach, and this is Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse. Your brokenness is your greatest blessing. What do I mean by that? There is a quote that says, that shit may have broken your heart, but it opened your eyes. Take that win. Take that win. What? When I tell you that heartbreak I experienced in 2015 was the greatest thing that set my soul free, it tore down the walls I built around my heart, my mind, my body, and my soul. It tore down the walls and the mindsets and the beliefs and the ideas that I was holding on to about religion and spirituality and God. I was dead. I was dead on the inside. I was I was just going through the motions of life. I'm probably going to get emotional. I was in a dead ass relationship for 20 years. Abusive. With a man who didn't value me and hell, to be perfectly honest, I ain't value him either. I didn't respect him either. You know why? Because I wasn't already doing it for myself. I grew up in a household with, I grew up surrounded by narcissistic women. By narcissistic women and believing that I needed to control and manipulate a man to be with me to give men ultimatums, to hold things over men's heads, to stay with a man even after infidelity, multiple, multiple women, not just one, multiple, multiple times. This is the mindset, you know, and, and I see it too, like, so many women think that they've won by being being with a man and sticking by a man through his shit. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about depression or anxiety or job loss. I'm talking about a man who constantly cheats, constantly uses other women against her. And, and, and same, same spectrum for the women too because I realize that there are some women out there that do this shit too. And this is what we are taught, right? That, that this, is, this is loyalty. No, it's not. It's actually betrayal of your own self. You're betraying your own heart, your own mind, your own body, your own spirit. Leave people alone to do the dumb shit that they need to do to work out their healing. We're all on a healing journey, right? We all have to work through our own stuff. And this is a lot of the reason why I stay single because I don't desire to pull anybody into my shit. I don't want anybody else to be a passenger in my ride while I'm, while I'm trying to heal. So this is a lot of the reasons why I stayed away from relationships and really didn't get into a relationship if you could even call it that until 2019. You know, because at that point, I was willing to actually uh, be more selfless and not selfish. But also in the same token, realizing that I deserve too. You know, and, and it was the first time ever that I was able to ask a man for help. You know, like if, if he offered, like say for instance, I had went to the store and had went to go pick up him and he'll be like, you know, um, don't worry about the, I got the bags. You know what I'm saying? Like he was good for that. Like he'll just get the bags. You know what I'm saying? Like I really didn't even have to ask him unless I had did something previous to us going to the store or something like that. And I was like, you know, can you grab that bag out the back for me or whatever? But I was finally in this space of taking care of him. You know what I'm saying? Like he would, he would come, I would make dinner and then I would fix his lunch. You know what I'm saying? Like just being that, that woman for him. And even if it didn't work out, I was able to actually give myself again where it had it had been a while since that two, 2015 because I was constantly trying to be back with him. 
you know, like, but I, I was in a space of being able to give to somebody because what happened was, you know, after, after that whole 2015 thing, you know, went down or whatever, you know, I tell people that should awaken my soul. It sent me right back to, to God. I ran back to God and that's what I always want to do from here on out. And the same thing when, when, when things didn't go right in 2019, you know, or two, that when we ended it in 2020, I ran back to God. I'm not running to no another man. I'm not running to no addictions, you know, and this is what I had done my whole entire life. So, you know, I wasn't truly living. So when that whole thing was over, yeah, I mourned for probably about two months, you know what I'm saying? And then I got back on my shit, you know, but you need, you need to be able to take that time. You need to be able to detox. You need to be able to go back to the drawing board and figure out the things that you need to work on. Because a lot of us always want to point out the shit in somebody else and, and not worrying about what we need to work out within ourselves, you know? So this is why I stay single because I don't want to drive, draw anybody else into that. You know, and a lot of men can't understand that I'm okay with just being your friend. You know, but I, I get it too that my energy makes, you know, makes men want to be in a relationship with me. And it's like, no, you know, like I tell my neighbor, like, you know, when I check on him or whatever, you know, he's like, thanks for, for checking on me and stuff like that. And I'm like, um, you know, look, there was a time in my life when I didn't love my neighbor as I love myself. And, and, and at this point in my life, that's what I want to do. I want to love my neighbor like I love myself. Not sexually, because I'm not loving myself sexually. You know, I've, I've discussed before that the only time that I masturbate is really on a full moon. You know, because I'm trying to manifest things I'm, and I'm setting the intention to do it for manifesting. You know, other than that, I don't think about it, you know, and that's how it is going forward. You know, because no matter how attracted I am to you physically, I need to get to know you mentally, emotionally, and spiritually first. That's it. That's a no-go for me. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I'll stay, I'll stay single until that person comes into my life and is ready to actually build with me. Cause I'm trying to build something this time. You know, I didn't build that when I got married, you know, at the age of 27. We hadn't built anything. Our whole relationship was built off of uh sex, drugs, and alcohol and toxicity. You know, so at this point, I'm sober, I'm sober-minded. You know, um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy uh, CBD, but that's for relaxation, you know, because I wake up in this energy, you know, like today, uh, I just like jumped out of the bed and got to work, you know what I'm saying? So I wake up in this energy, but because I am high vibrational energy at night, I really do want to just relax, you know? So when all is said and done, I may, you know, uh, eat a gummy or um, smoke a little bit of the flower, you know, like, but it's not an addiction, you know, so I try to, I try to moderate myself. I live in moderation, you know, with everything in my life, the foods, everything, you know, so for the most part, I eat a healthy diet, you know, but I'm going to have my, well, I, I, I eat a uh, coconut ice cream now, but I'm going to have my, my float, my milkshakes, you know what I'm saying? My malted milkshakes. I'm going to have cookies. You know, but it's not an everyday thing. I'm going to have my jalapeno ranch ruffled. You know what I'm saying? But it's not an everyday thing, you know. So for the most part, you know, like my breakfast this morning was the nature cereal. You know, and I'll have nuts. I love nuts. Pistachios are like my favorite. And I get this big ass bag from Costco. Um, and I eat them by myself because my daughter really don't be eating them. But, you know, so I take care of myself. I know how to take care of myself. And so I'm only going to give that out to my partner as well. But I also know now that I deserve that too. And that's why I say that that heartbreak was my greatest blessing, you know, because I was so afraid of disappointing other people. And I was so afraid of their opinions about me that they became my God. And I put God in myself second while I served everyone else, you know, my mind was so closed off because I grew up with one belief about life, love, religion, and relationships. And this one soul showed me what I truly deserve. You know, and yeah, it might have, you know, a lot of people say, well, it, it was, it was, it was a narcissistic relationship. And it's true. It it may have been. You know, I'm I'm not going to blame him for anything because 
I know too that I love bomb him. You know what I'm saying? Like we just connected immediately. You know what I'm saying? And it was just like I wanted to be around him. I wanted to touch him. I wanted to like I, I wanted to be around him. I loved his energy. I loved his presence. You know, and it didn't matter if we were doing anything, just to be in his energy was enough for me, you know. So I really don't believe that it was a narcissistic. I do believe that we both love bomb each other because it was kind of like, oh my goodness, like this is my person. And that's that's how I felt, you know. So um, you know, and in the beginning he showed me what I truly deserved. Like I took care of him too. So like you know, he loved when I text him and, and send, like, you know, funny stuff or um, quotes or whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? And I love that he, he spoke my love language, too, you know? Like, I didn't have to ask him to do things. Like, if I came over his house, best believe dinner was ready, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was, you know, house was clean. It was just, like, he instinctively knew and I instinctively knew his love language. Like, I would touch on him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know where, just kiss him, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, it really did, it, it may have broke my heart, but it really did open my mind, you know, and to question things and to start gaining knowledge, you know, about myself and become more self-aware and, you know, to question the things that I learned as a child, you know, about God, religion, and spirituality, you know what I'm saying? So, um, it broke my heart, but it opened my mind to stop hiding my love for God and display it openly because... A relationship with God, with God is like any other relationship, you know. Um, they're all different and very personal. Um, so our individual relationship with God is not for everyone else to understand. And, and it's okay. Just like our relationship with our significant other is not for everyone else to understand. You know, whatever that re relationship may look like. And this is why I don't judge people about, you know, who are polygamous or who, you know, are homosexual or who uh, are bisexual because I don't know what their relationship with God and their journey is about. I know that we're all here evolving. We're all here growing. We are all on our own healing journey back to love. And I don't know what their journey contains for them. So I can't judge what they are doing, I can only live my life by what my soul standard is, you know, and, and that's, that's becoming aware of myself because, you know, I told people before, I've been in those kind of situations, you know, I've, I've, I've had experiences with other women, you know, I've been in a situation that was polygamous and I didn't even know, you know, but I know what my soul desires, I know what my soul desires and that's not it for me. That's not it. So um, I'm okay with being, you know, single because I'm happy single. It, it doesn't matter what I have, who I don't have. You know, actually, yesterday I was like, you know what? A lot of this heartbreak and pain has actually made me asexual. You know, like, I love everybody, but I'm not attracted to anybody. Like, right now in my life, I'm not attracted to anybody, not a soul. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, not a soul am I attracted to. So, you know, it, it has made me really asexual, you know, because I do. I love everybody. Everybody I meet, I'm making sure that they know and can feel this energy of love that is radiating from me, you know. Um, but I do have to take my time, too, because I give a lot, you know. So, um, you know, uh, we all have this, you know, we, we all can have a safe and solid and stable relationship with God, but... It requires us to surrender our innate need for our flesh to control things, you know? It, it means that we need to let our soul lead the way. And a lot of us, um, include me including myself, you know, there's a lot of pride, there's a lot of ego involved, you know? Um, we don't want to um, apologize to people, you know, um, that we know we've hurt. Um, we don't, we don't want to communicate with people, you know. We just expect people to just, to just, you know, to just under, you know, to just do what we want them to do, you know. And it doesn't always work like that. It doesn't always work like that. And, you know, we want people to give us more than what we're willing to give, you know. Um, and it, 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 
our soul knows that we're going to fight, you know, because we want to do our things our way, you know, because doing things the soul's way is hard. It's hard work, you know. You know, me continuously reaching out to him, that was hard for me. That was hard for me, you know. Um, just being there for him without anything, without having anything, that was very hard for me, you know. Um, and finally, I did. I did I did have to just stop, you know, because um, I still was wanting something more um, than, than just friendship, you know. So eventually I had to stop, you know, and, um, and just really move forward with my life, you know, just move forward with my life, re regardless of how the situation turns out, what the future holds, just don't even focus on the f future, just focus on today and just live in my life, you know, and going forward. And, um, you know, and, and, and when we fight, when we're fighting the soul, you know, this is where we end up in chaos and depression and the pain comes in because we're not taking the time to connect to source on a daily basis. You know, we have to connect with God daily, every day, you know, and it broke my heart and I hit rock bottom. I did. I lost. Well, a lot of it was I gave up a lot of stuff because like I said, it really did awake my soul and made me realize that um, I was settling for way less than what I deserved. You know, and that I was so focused on the materialistic things that life provides and not the service and the love aspect of it. You know, here I am building a 3,000 square foot house and fucking miserable in it, miserable in it, you know, and, and, and dead on the inside. Like I wasn't doing this, the stuff that I love to do, my passion, writing, dancing, like I wasn't doing any of that. And for years, I was blaming other people. I was blaming my children's father. Oh, he's always, you know, every time I'm trying to do something positive, he's always, you know, coming against me. Leave. Leave then. You know, like, why was I staying in that situation with an unsupportive partner? You know, because I'm going to give the support. You know, and I get it. You know, no, our partners don't need to support us in everything that we do. But you know what, having a, having a supportive partner that is there for you, that's the greatest blessing. That is the greatest blessing that you could ever have because it takes you further on your journey. It really and truly does. And you know, I've been, I've, I've been unsupported on this journey for so many years and um, you know, I do have the, the movement makers who support me and I support them, but um, you have to be okay with being on your journey unsupported and alone sometimes, you know, and, and I feel that that has really made me stronger. Is it, is it in the best, best way stronger? I don't know, you know, because I, like I said, I am like at this point, like asexual, you know, it's just like, like I'm not feeling anybody right now at this point in my life. Like I'm feeling myself right now, you know, and and, and living my life and just enjoying my time alone, you know, because I really don't think that I've taken enough time for myself to really enjoy all of me. You know, I've had a year here, a year there, seven months here, nine months here, but I haven't really took, taken like a full two years just for myself. And I really do believe that this is the point that I'm at today, you know, because I'm tired of playing games with people, you know, um, and, and I get it, you know, there are going to be people who just don't even like my energy, who are not feeling me, and that's okay. That's okay, but, you know, like, I have no problem with, you know, I mean, hey, if I see something that I'm interested in, and just, you know, reaching out to it, and if it doesn't respond back, then that's okay, too, you know. Um, but, I mean, it just really, you know, taught me so many things, and so rock bottom you know, was the greatest blessing for me because it really did have to tear apart that false identity, that false world that I was holding on to. You know, I was holding on to, to that victim mindset, that blaming mindset. I was holding on to, you know, not realizing my own potential, you know, and instead of somebody else realizing it and that's why they're in my life because they're trying to distract me because they see my potential. You know what I'm saying? Like, so 
even though it didn't work out, even though my heart broke, it, it, it opened my eyes. It opened the eyes of my mind, you know, to change my mindset, to learn new things, to study, you know, to not believe everything that I see, you know, but to trust more in my intuition because I stayed for so long in these relationships because I didn't trust me, which is my intuition, which is directly from God. You know, so now it's like, oh no, I trust my intuition. Why my intuition say, get gone, bam, I'm out, I'm gone. Because I'm not sticking around anymore. You know, if, if the feelings aren't mutual, if we're not genuinely trying to uplift and encourage each other and support each other, then I don't want it. I don't want it, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just been a one-way street for me for so long. Even though, you know, 2019, like I would tell him, you know, like um, when I was tap dancing, like I asked him one day, could I come and use his floor? Because we was hanging, you know, we was together. We was hanging out or whatever. And um, he got a kitchen and he got wood on his floor. So I was like, can I come? If I'm going to be at your house, then I need to do my tap dancing, right? So he wanted to see that, like, he wanted to see videos of me dancing and stuff like that. So, you know, like, that that's supportive to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not asking you to invest, but that's, that's supportive to me, you know? So he was, you know, like, supportive. Um, and, you know, he, I mean, we all have our own things, but the whole third-party person, I, could, I couldn't get with, you know? So, um, and I'm not going to compete with another woman. I've already said that. If I need to compete with another woman, then you're not the man for me. I'm not. I'm not doing it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, because I, if we're in a genuine relationship together, I'm not entertaining anybody else, and I'm expecting you to do the same. And if you're not, then that's fine. I know the betrayal happened. I can walk away with dignity, and I can go forward with my life. And that's exactly what I have done. You know, um, I moved. You know, from a one bedroom apartment to a two bedroom apartment. You know, like just constantly elevating myself and I'm going to continue to do that. And like I said, I'm just really going to be by myself these next two years, you know, and just really enjoying me, building, building, building my life, traveling and doing the things that I love to do. And then attracting what I desire to come into my life, you know, because, um, you know, I, I because I am a loving person, because I am an empath, a lot of people want to suck that energy from me and take that energy from me. And it's like, no, I want someone to be on the same vibrational level that I'm on, you know, and they work through their healing. And we know that he healing is every single day, but they're not projecting that, you know, onto me. So rock bottom was really the place that I found God, like for real God, not, not this, this God that people talk about, but the for real God, the truest soulmate, the love of my life and my one true king. I stopped looking outside of myself and began to love all that that was already in me. You know, all of my gifts, my talents, the things that I bring to the table, the value, the benefit that I add to everybody's lives. You know, like, it, it, I found all of this by simply learning to love myself unconditionally beyond all the abuse that I experienced as a child. You know, a lot of times I had to go back to move forward, you know, because I needed to find the source of that pain that that little girl had experienced, you know, that that teenage girl had experienced. I needed to find the source of that pain so that I could provide her with the healthy love, nurturing, and guidance that she never received as a child in her teenage years, you know, the, the love to, sh to, to, to tell her, you know, to show her what healthy love looks like so that she wouldn't find herself in these one-sided abusive relationships. That she would know, oh no, that's, that's not love at all because I, I, I experienced my parents' love and that's not love. It's not love at all, you know? Um, and, and not searching outside of herself for love. But, but going within, you know, you know, I had to, I had to love the little girl who grew up in the hood of Cleveland, Ohio, where you, you either end up in jail or dead, you know, or leave, 
which is what I had to do. I had to change my environment if I was ever going to grow. In a lot of situations, I had to leave my family and come down to North Carolina and begin to change. I had to leave my husband so that I could continue. I had to leave my husband, my house, everything that I had worked for so that I could evolve as a soul. Because people who are comfortable in their pain, they don't want to see you grow. They don't want to see you grow because that means you'll outgrow them. You know, and for so many years I was comfortable in that pain. That pain that kept me in fear of doing this, sharing my stories, being me, the weirdo that I am, the eccentric person that I am, the free bird that I am, you know? I was dying. I was dying on the inside. <laughs> Dead. In a whole bunch of pain. Depressed. Suffering anxiety attacks. Panic attacks. <laughs> and I gave it all up for peace. For love. <laughs> you know, my, my daddy, my daddy was very smart. He was a genius. He worked on a rail railroad. And my mother used her genius to hustle, to take from people. From the time that I was two years old, my mother was in and out of jail. I lived with my grandmother from the age of two until the age of seven. And then again when I was 12 and 17 until I graduated high school. My purpose, what I thought was to become a product of my environment. That's what I thought. I had even went down that road. But my soul had another plan. And that heartbreak, that heartbreak woke me up to that. You know, it was a, it was a, it was a lot of years where I hated him. I hated him. I was angry at him. I was holding a grudge toward him because it broke me a fuck apart. Like, <laughs> I had so many depressed days. I cried so much. I lost weight. But it fixed my sight. It helped me to trust God and God alone and to love God and to know that God always has the best for me. That God will lead me to these situations and to trust my intuition when God says, okay, they're not listening. Leave. You know, I experienced a lot of fear, a lot of judgment you know, concerning my love for God and speaking about my love for God because so many people don't believe that God exists. Not never knowing that we're putting that energy out there. We do it. We put that energy of hate out there. We put that energy of pain and hurt. God is love. We, we choose our path. We're choosing our paths. There's, there's, a, there's a, a light wolf and a dark wolf in all of us. And whichever one you feed the most has the most power. So if you're constantly feeding it hate and hurt and bitterness and anger and jealousy, guess what's going to arise outside of you? You're going to come in contact with that. But the more you, you, you feed it love and compassion and empathy and kindness... That's what's going to arise too. And on the days where you have those, those emotions where you where some jealousy or envy comes up, you 
you deal with it. You don't project it. Because it's, it's, it's all within us, the light and the dark. But you have to be more cognizant and aware of feeding that light energy. We need the positive and the negative to grow. We absolutely do. We need the positive and the negative to manifest. But we don't need to sit there. We don't need to sit in depression. We don't need to sit in anxiety. We don't need to sit in anger and bitterness and jealousy and envy. We can let those emotions rise up and flow through us. Stay in your bed that day or do whatever it is. Tell people, I'm, today is not my best day. Whatever it is that you need to do so you're not projecting that shit outwardly. You know, I lost hope. I lost hope on this journey, I did. And I know that that was a lot um, of me coming out of what, you know, coming out of that fear. You know, coming out of that fear and, and, and having more trust in God. You know, that God is truly the anchor of my life and will, will carry me through any storm. You know, um, that God is my way maker, that he can part the seas and I walk through. That, that God can move the mountain, but he's showing me that I have the power to move it too. You know? And God helps me to believe that something loves me so deeply that it continues to direct my steps and takes good care of me. You know, because people can't believe you doing all this with God, with God alone. With God alone. I've had men come in and out of my life on this journey that have never given me a dime, have never paid a bill, have never bought anything for me. I've been doing this with God and God alone, and I'll continue to do it with God and God alone because I don't require financial um, riches, you know. Do you need to be financially responsible? Absolutely. Because financial responsibility helps you to save, helps you to invest, helps you to buy properties while you're living in an apartment so that when you are actually ready to have your own property, you buy land and you have this residual income coming from those investment properties. Financial responsibility is financial maturity, just like it is mental maturity and emotional maturity and spiritual maturity. Having physical maturity to know the things that you should be putting in your body and that you shouldn't. The things that bring you high energy and the things that, that drag your energy down. This is what it means to love yourself unconditionally. And to become balanced in a healthy way for, that looks that's balance for you because my balance is not your balance. You know, and when, when I was dating that man in 2020, I would cook him chicken even though I was more vegan at that time. You know, like I told him, I don't eat chicken all the time. And he wanted to cook for me, but it was like, I don't eat chicken all the time. Like I eat more vegetables, make some vegetables. <laughs> you know, make some potatoes, make some, you know, stuff like that. But he wanted to change me. He wanted me to start eating meat again and eating chicken. And stuff. And no, that stuff is not good for my body. It, it, it drains my energy. And I want to be in a high vibrational energy for the most of my days. You know, I've had depressed days and ang anxious days and severe panic attacks. And I'm like where I am now. You know, and I'm proud of myself for that relationship because I didn't let him bring me down. I said no and walked away from it. Whereas before... When I got into the relationship with my children's father, I was okay with letting him change me. You know why? Because I didn't love myself authentically. And I wanted to be what he wanted me to be. I wanted my hair to, to be the way that he liked it. And you know what? It was never good enough. Never good enough. Nothing I did was ever good enough. Whether I was out getting high, getting drunk with my girls, Staying out till 4 o'clock in the morning in the strip club, stripping, lying to him, telling him I was at the bar. That wasn't good enough. When I started to actually dive into spirituality and stopped 
smoking and drinking and staying out, that wasn't good enough. And I continued to stay and continued to blame him when I knew many of times that I should have left. Before I even built that house, before I even got married, I had anxiety. I had a thyroid, a goiter, because I was so stressed out. Still wasn't listening to my int intuition. I was so fearful. It paralyzed me. When, I, when we were building that house, I was like, no, I'm going, I'm going to get me and my kids an apartment. We're going to do this on our own. I was getting my credit together. I hadn't even put him on to get his credit together. But something in me was like, no, no, no. And I did it anyway. And finally, enough was enough. I met that man in 2015. He showed me what I truly deserve. And even if I'm not with him, that was the, the greatest blessing of my life. The greatest blessing. And you know what? We may never get another chance, me and him. We may never. But I know I can go on and love somebody else and take care of another man. I know I can, because I did it in 2019. But at this point in time, I'm just really focusing on me. So I'm not even interested in any kind of relationship, friendships only, that's it, you know. You wanna come over here, chill at the pool, you wanna go to the lake, uh, but no, no coming in my house, none of that stuff, you know. Like, I just really want a friendship right now. That's all, I don't need a relationship right now. So, um, you know, the, that broke my heart with that rejection and him ghosting me and him, you know, telling me that uh, he didn't see us being anything more, um, you know, you know, all of that rejection and, and that betrayal, you know, when I saw him with that girl that looked like me, it was like a punch in the gut. It was like my whole entire, I lost my breath. I lost my breath. And, but that betrayal pushed me pushed me further out of my comfort zone. And I became the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of myself. And now I am teaching other people. I have two communities. I have a free community where if you just want to come and, 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 and let me guide you with videos and a monthly um, Zoom meeting, um, motivational posts, come join me. But the paid membership is a deeper exploration because we're, we're breaking it down into mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, relational, and financial. So that's, that's over a period of time, it's over like a year, you know? So, but if you are ready to just start loving yourself unconditionally more, come join me, it's a free Facebook community. Go on suzysuttles.com, um, sign up for the newsletter. And once you sign up for the newsletter, you get access for every, you get, you get your discounts, you get the uh, Facebook group, the free Facebook group community link. Um, you get, uh, and also your, your free PDF copy of the workbook that we will be using in that free um, Facebook community. So join me, you know. I wanna see as many people as I can this year become, you know, the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of themselves so that they can learn to love other people unconditionally, not trying to control them. Just loving people for who they are. So um, if you guys are interested in, um, in joining, please go ahead and sign up. Um, this is the end of the program. I thank you all for being here. If you are listening on Anchor, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Google Podcasts, um, go ahead and share if you are able to share. If you are watching on YouTube, Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel for notifications of new, and click the bell for notifications for new um, videos. Because I'm trying to upload one every single day. Well, forget trying, I'm doing, I'm, tr I'm doing videos every single day. So, um, of course, I'm gonna talk about A Mother's Touch, Inc. That is my baby. It is a community organization that assists men and women financially who are leaving domestic violence relationships and having a hard time financially. It also provides loving support and mentoring for any person who desires to live a healthy, happy, and holistic life with a mental barrier. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally Beyond Abuse Facebook community and the organization was created based on the desire to be the community and organization that I needed when I found myself struggling financially 
after leaving an unhealthy and abusive relationship. The organization is a proud collaborate, collaborator with community organizations whose mission is assisting families and co-parents with becoming the healthiest and truest version of themselves. Healthy adults raise healthy, happy, and holistic children who have a healthy love of self and others. If you are someone you know is in need of financial assistance, or if you are interested in donating to our mission, please visit www.amotherstouchinc.org to fill out the financial form or to make it a, a donation. And all of your donations are greatly accepted and appreciated. And this is the time of the program where we're done. And I want to send you guys out with a prayer of love. So, dear universe, I'm so thankful. I am so thankful. I, I saw that situation in 2015 like it was the end of my life. But what, I, what I've come to recognize and come to know is that it was actually the beginning. The beginning of the life that my soul, my soul wanted for me. And I took that, I took it so hard. I took it so hard, I made it, I made it more about my shortcomings, my insecurities than I did about my strengths because I didn't know myself I didn't know my value I didn't know who I truly was yeah on the outside it may have appeared like I had my shit together but I was all I was all messed up on the inside and, and I'm thankful because that, that brief encounter taught me how to love myself unconditionally. It taught me how to apply myself and learn beyond PTSD, bipolar, and ADHD, and panic attacks, and depression, to believe in me To believe in your love for me. It taught me so many wonderful things. It taught me how to value myself. It taught me how to respect myself. How to have a backbone and stop letting people walk over me. Because of my loving nature. Because it's not about being nice. It's about being loving. And people see that as nice and think, oh, I can just get over on that person. It taught me how to stand on my own two feet with you as my foundation. Not a relationship, not another person, but you as my foundation. As a secure foundation, a safe foundation, a foundation that I can trust in and believe in and rely on. That relationship broke my heart, but it opened up my eyes. to see you, to accept your love for me truly in my heart and not in my mind. Because we can't fathom. I know I couldn't when I was sitting up in church. How could something that I can't see love me this deeply, this madly, this passionately, <laughs> when the people who stare me in my face can't, don't. <laughs> it taught me how to love unconditionally and to express my needs in the beginning. 
It taught me how to trust myself enough to know that I would be okay to walk away from any situation where the person does not value or respect me. Because I always have you. And as long as I have you, I have everything that I need. It taught me that none of this materialistic shit matters. The only thing that matters is my name. Because even at rock bottom, I can rebuild again with you. You have me. My heart, my mind, my body, my soul is yours. I surrender my all to you. I love you so deeply. And I love your love for me. You never stop fighting for me. You always have my back. You always show me the way. I'm not going my own way anymore. That's chaos. It's drama. I choose to remain here in peace with you because you are you are anyway the best is best friend. My truest confidant and my greatest supporter. My lover and my man. When I don't have anyone else to hold at night, I can hold on to you your promises, your love for me. And because you show me every day, you only want the best for me. As long as I continue to take action. And I love that you tell me to rest. Don't worry about it. Enjoy your life. I got this. But when I need you to take action, I need you to take action. I'm yours whether I live in famine or whether I am feasting. I am yours in abundance or in need, in sunshine or rain, in joy or pain. You have me, all of me. I thank you for parting the seas and allowing me to walk through on dry land. I thank you for being that anchor in those rough seas where I knew I was going to drown kept me steady. I thank you for, for being my shelter from the rain. For being my fortress, my hiding place. When I need to get away, I can't come and hide in you. I love you, God. Universe, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, Energy, Life Force, Prana Chi, my world, my life, my everything. You are the air that I breathe, the song that I sing. You are my melody, my harmony. You are my joy. And I'll, I'll give it all away for you. I love you. I'm thankful and grateful to see another day and I'm so abundantly blessed above all I could ever ask, think, or imagine. And it is a privilege and an honor to love, to share my love, to share my energy with other people in this format, in this manner, in the community. So let's rock this day out. Let's get her done. And so be it and so it is. Amen, amen, and amen. I thank y'all for being here with me today. I want you to go out. Have an awesome, amazing, and beautiful day today. From my heart to yours, as always. Namaste. If you experienced rejection, abandonment, trauma, or abuse as a child, you may find it difficult to create a healthy, happy, and holistic life. You are not alone. I am Coach Susie, and I am a survivor of addiction and narcissistic domestic violence abuse. I was raised by a mother who experienced narcissistic personality disorder, and I experienced every type of abuse. I was rejected, abandoned, and traumatized before the age of 10. As I grew older, I attracted these same type of relationships into my life because this was my life. 
It was all I knew. And it was what I was accustomed to until I introduced myself to something different. In 2015, I left a 20 year unhealthy and abusive relationship with a man who struggles with narcissistic personality disorder. And I began a journey into loving myself unconditionally. It took me five years to accomplish living a happy, healthy, and holistic life, and that was primarily due to the lack of financial and educational resources for people like me who were severely traumatized as children and grew up in impoverished neighborhoods. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement was created from the mind of a traumatized child who struggled for years with self-doubt and low self-esteem. But I learned to love herself unconditionally beyond past abuse and thrive successfully in life with PTSD, bipolar disorder, and ADHD. I struggled to love myself unconditionally due to the mental and emotional abuse I received as a child. The voices of doubt, fear, and not good enough would constantly haunt me until I began to change my mind. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is a community of people who desire to learn practical and effective ways to love themselves unconditionally beyond abuse. The Loving Yourself Unconditionally movement is not about chasing perfection and trying to be perfect. It's about learning to love yourself unconditionally in every area of your life, no matter what that looks like. It's about becoming the healthiest, happiest, and truest version of yourself, no matter what that looks like. If you are ready to learn how to love yourself unconditionally beyond abuse, pre-register today at suzysuttles.com. Everyone has something to teach us. My question to you is, are you ready to learn?